Ladies and gentlemen, this is Gail Morgan welcoming you to the Libertarian Counterpoints Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast. You've heard their point, now listen to the counterpoint. Welcome to the Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast. We're coming at you on April 21st, 2021, uh, about, gosh, about three or four months into the Biden, and it seems forever with the assault on liberty that we're getting. But before we get into any of this, let's uh, uh, let's introduce our panel today. In our upper left-hand corner, we have our screaming eagle of freedom, Tim Everett. He is a pilot in the state of California. In our upper right-hand corner, we have Leon, the word Brathwaite, last word in liberty. He is a retired engineer in the state of California. We have a special guest today. Uh, joining us, his name is Aaron Comey, and he has a, a podcast, Escaping the Echo Chamber, which he does out of New York. And we're actually going to take advantage of that a little bit today because we're going to talk about some comparisons uh, with respect to California, New York, and uh, all the crazy assaults that are going on on our liberties here. And before we get into that, also, my name is Jason McPhee, and I'll be your host today. So uh, let's jump right into it. Uh, California, I mean, well, we've got our, our governor is... Uh, heading towards a recall, it looks like, and that's probably going to be a lot of political circus. Certainly, it seems like Cuomo probably deserves one, too, but <laughs> I haven't heard of anything happening on that side uh, yet over here. But uh, gosh, we've, we've got all kinds of people starting to come out of the woodwork, it looks like. Uh, so they got Caitlyn Jenner starting to throw her hat into the ring. Um, it looks like there, there may be a few other um, uh, Republicans in the state who've uh, starting to step in. I, I think, uh, gosh, I'm trying to remember some of the, uh, well, I haven't heard of any libertarians yet. So hopefully we'll get some libertarians in there as well. The mayor, the, mayor, the former mayor of San Diego, a guy by the name, I forget his first name, his last name is Falcone. He's, he's, okay. he's yeah, he's going to be, uh, or Faulkner or something like that. He's, he's got it in. Um, Caitlin Jenner, um, a few others. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. Well, <laughs> j- j- just to refresh our viewers' memories, uh, this is a well-earned recall. We have had um, a year of lockdowns uh, with Governor Newsom. He has uh, essentially, uh, it, he has defied his own lockdowns, <laughs> heading out to expensive restaurants with uh, no less than health lobbyists who have also told us how dangerous this is while they uh, they go and uh, wine and dine themselves. <laughs> and, you know, being lobbyists, uh, you know, that, that, that money is sort of coming indirectly from the public in a lot of ways, too, most likely. But uh, um, it's, it's just uh, crazy. I mean, we've had uh, these... Um, Literally last year, we had orange skies during part of the year because of the fires that we've had here, which, you know, tries to say is just climate change. But certainly there's uh, clearly some issues with, uh, um, you know, our forest management. As forest well. management, yes. Yeah. I mean, we had an issue with uh, prisoners in prison, literally people we've locked up for crimes being able to get uh, unemployment while they're in prison. <laughs> Just insane. I mean, can the government do anything right? <laughs> oh, literally lock us up in the vault with all of our money and <laughs> imagine it. Well, um, apparently, you know, yeah. Uh, apparently, is uh, he's doing enough right to get a fairly decent uh, approval rating, and I don't, I don't think he's going to be recalled personally. Uh, you, you, unfortunately, you don't but, think so. You think you think he's going to um, survive the first question? Yeah, if I have to go out on a limb, I would predict, you know, if I have to look at the crystal ball that rarely works and uh, and make a prediction, then I would predict that he's going to make it through all this. Uh, I've kind of maybe it's just, you know, me being um, bearish on the political climate of California for so long. And, you know, just, you know, my default thing is to pessimism when it comes to the politics of California. So chalk it up to that. Uh, Not necessarily prescience. (laughs) We'll see, though. What do you think, Leon? Well, I mean, honestly, um, to me, it it does not matter because I think the same mentality that is ruining our state at, at the present moment, that will survive. Whether it is in um, Gavin Newsom's body or in his replacement's body, the mentality will survive. And our state will still keep on going down the crapshoot hole it is going down right now. So it really doesn't make a difference to me who wins, who survives um, the recall. Unless something radical happens like 
you know, maybe a Republican get in and, and win or something like that. Maybe something can change. But the mentality will survive, I think. So it really doesn't make a difference, quite frankly. Wow, I thought I was pessimistic. Well, what do you, <laughs> what do you, what do you think, Aaron, from uh, across the, the fruited plain, the other side of the fruited plain? From an outside perspective, it looks like the media is doing for Newsom the same thing it's doing for Cuomo here. Um, and it looks like they're just crafting him into this um, titan of uh, this hero of the pandemic that, you know, without his leadership, without his, in, well, not interference, it, it, it's actually interference, but they will craft it as without his providing for everybody's safety, you know, people would have, people would have died. You know, of course yes. people did die, but it, it would have been so much worse without him in, in place. And so that's the message that, I mean, people are scared and they're, they will play that fear till the wheels fall off. Yeah. You know, no, that's, that, that's a good point, yeah. you know, but there's, there's one. That's good. Go ahead, Tim, I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, I'm just agreeing with you. Sorry, Leon. Oh, oh okay. You, do you like me to agree with you? Oh. <laughs> whatever, whatever, whatever knock, rocks your boat today, it's okay. It's it tosses is not rocking your boat, so it's okay. <laughs> but you know, there is there is a major hypocrisy here that is ongoing that I really have a problem with. You know, during the election, they tell us, oh, signatures, you know, we can be we don't have to we don't have to worry about signatures, you know, we could verify signatures, maybe, maybe not. It don't have to be, you know, it could be a little a little X. It, it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be a perfect match, all these sort of things. Remember they told us that? But you know, we're having a recall on Mr. Newsom. And you know what they have to do? Oh, we have to verify those signatures and we have to make sure they're correct. Otherwise, we'll have to kick them out. We'll have to kick out these people who, who signed um, the recall the re recall petitions. Yeah. So when it's a recall, one of these incumbents or one of their favorite incumbents, when it's a recall, oh, the signature very, mat very matters. But when we go to vote, no, 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 no. It, it's not as important. This is the hypocrisy that's going on here. Okay. Yes. They want us to accept lawlessness. That's their problem. Our vote, it is not very important as long as it produces the right person in power. That's all they're trying to tell us. Uh, Jason, we should have some kind of sound effect and a banner whenever the hypocrisy card is being played uh, on <laughs> yeah. the Democrats here. Because... <laughs> Because we do that all the time. I, mean, oh, yes. Yes. I don't know. We should have like little explosions, little fireworks. You yeah. Know? yeah. And, and hypocrisy on parade. I don't think we'd have any of that rest of the show. It would all be that just constantly. <laughs> it would. It would. For sure. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. But you know, it's, it's funny in thinking about this, this recall. Uh, you know, it seems to me that uh, one of the things that maybe it offers a real chance is for maybe a libertarian candidate to get in there, get some notice, and, and just be able to get some face time with the cameras. Because that is one thing that a uh, um, one of these recall elections allows is essentially you need almost nothing to get in on this. I mean, it's literally, I think it's like a $7,000 fee or something like that to yes. either get in or you need something in the neighborhood of like 5,000 signatures or something. I can't remember the exact number, but it's a sure. it's pretty low bar, which means that there's some, maybe some libertarians out there that could potentially jump in, if nothing else, just to get some FaceTime with the camera and try and say, hey, look, there's a better way. We don't necessarily need to win this mm -hmm. thing. We just need to, to alter the, the, the you the know, if, yeah, if you can turn the Titanic far enough in advance of that iceberg, just a degree. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It might miss this, the iceberg. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but this is just the point. This is just the point. We are heading towards that iceberg. We see the iceberg laying there in the ocean. And we're going to recall the, the first captain. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to put the, another captain in this place, and he's going to be still headed towards the iceberg. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's going to be going, what iceberg? All I see is palm trees. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, shoot. Uh, so, okay, Mr. Pessimism has spoken, and I I hate, hate to have to agree, but I guess I'm going to have to. 
<laughs> we know all this said is California doesn't have a monopoly on terrible governors. And so, as we mentioned before, Cuomo has yeah. got his own. I mean, he's I, constantly... I think we're number one. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're, we're the worst of the worst. We're the best yeah. of the worst. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> as far as his lying, you know, it's sort of like if he speaks, his pants just <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> tells you Explodes. how wonderful a job he did. And he has CNN backing him up, you know, to, to essentially, uh, you know, play fiddle in the background for him, you know, <laughs> support yeah. all of his uh, narratives. But uh, so t- tell us a little bit about, uh, uh, you know, the bad experience. I, I guess all of the crazy stuff with Cuomo. And it, 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 is there a movement to, get, to recall him at all? Or is this. There just- is. But it's like he has so much control over the state and over the media that like it, it's 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 surprising that any of this actually managed to get out um, because this entire this entire year. I mean, he's been horrible for his entire tenure. In fact, New York has been shedding population, uh, the number one state in losing population for years now. Um, the mm-hmm. pandemic just just exacerbated that just spe- sped that up. But like what he did in the during the pandemic, um, from pretending that everything was fine. Um, in fact, the mayor of New York City says, "Okay, yeah, we 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 might need to lock down," and he goes, "No, we don't need to lock down. Everything's fine." And then he announced the lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> and then one of the interesting things is uh, just a quick side note in terms of like the the voting hypocrisy. You know how the Democrats are talking about, you know, the 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 Republicans are trying to lessen the vote. Well, in the middle of the pandemic, it, during the lockdown, one of the first actions he took was to change the state um, ballot, ballot election laws. So he killed third parties in New York State. Oh, geez. <laughs> we, yes, okay. that, that's one of the first things he did was he changed the laws for the requirements for a third party to be a recognized party. And you know, and, and nobody better than I. Okay. Well, but then, of, of course, you know, he did much worse than that. You know, he, he sent people to nursing homes who were COVID positive, people who were the, the, the people who were most at risk from the disease. He yes. sent people with the disease into their, their, their uh, uh, proximity. And everybody was praising him like he was, they, they were talking about him running for president. They really, yes. they, it, it, and it was it was insane because I'm looking here. I'm looking at the numbers, and we have the worst numbers of any state in the in in the country. And I remember my mom. She doesn't live in New York State, so she calls and she's like, "Oh, Trump is so horrible," but but your governor seems like he's doing a really good job. I said, "Mom, have you looked at the numbers?" <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Mom, you have the worst numbers of any state in the country." She goes, "Really?" I said, "Yes." It's, I said, "It's horrible here." What? <laughs> And so it's, it's amazing the job that the media can do to prop yeah. these guys up. I mean, they actually yeah. had the, they were calling themselves Cuomo sexuals during the yeah. Yeah. That's right. yeah. Yeah. And, and then and then the irony of irony is suddenly he's being hit with sexual harassment. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, unbelievable. Unbelievable. But is there is there an effort? To recall him, I know there's an effort to impeach him in the legislature. Is right, there so an that, effort to recall him, though? So, no, there's no effort to, to recall him, uh, like by decision tree. They want him to resign. He's not going to resign. He's too full of himself. He he has too much power. And um, there's an effort to impeach him. But I don't think, I think ultimately the Democrats, most of the Democrats will close ranks. There's some more left-leaning Democrats who are like are trying to use this opportunity, like they smell blood in the water. But I just don't think there's enough of them to actually uh, successfully get rid of him. I see. But, like he may actually even because tr- he was planning on rerunning again. Yes. And that's the question: Has this done enough damage to him so that he actually won't do that, or is he just you know he's got a bunch of money in in his campaign account, and I don't know if he's at this point where he's just so full of himself that he goes, you know what, I am gonna run again despite all of this. Oh, uh, you never know. <laughs> Yeah. You never know. 
you know, even if he doesn't get recalled or, you know, I, I guess thrown out of office, it, it may just be that enough people decide to escape New York and Los Angeles, I guess, <laughs> on our side, that, you know, yeah. may, maybe that's the way, you know, you get rid of them. You, the people leave, the state right. leave. <laughs> I just leave in the city. There. Right. 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 <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's, it's like those old movies, Escape from New York, Escape from L.A. I mean, this is what's yeah. happening to places that are sort of the gems of the uh of the team blue you know i mean they're they're, yeah. they're literally their policies their command and control is just causing people to flee we, we've got people leaving in u-hauls in fact it's funny i was just coming from uh I, I had a trip in vegas this last weekend and when we were on our drive back from vegas we saw at least five u-hauls headed out <laughs> 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 no, I mean, it was, it was kind of hysterical, but the, the, the price differential in these U-Hauls with people voting with their feet is like three or four times the price to leave as it is to come because you yes. know, not, not enough people who are coming are coming with U-Hauls, I guess, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, as far as New York goes, you mentioned uh, people are escaping that, uh, number one, I guess. Uh, yes. Where's everybody going? And <laughs> I mean, they're, they're going down to Florida, like AOC's mother left New York to go to Florida because it's, oh. it's the taxes, property taxes were too high. It's, I yeah. didn't know that. Oh, yeah. wow, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. That's um, really and, interesting. So, And they're still promoting these policies. They're still yeah. taxing just people to oblivion. Yeah, yes. yeah, they're, they want to increase the taxes. So Aaron, I hope I'm not out of line, but do you yes. have any pl uh, do you have any plans of leaving New York? I don't because um, I do plan to just stay and fight. Um, You're gonna fight, okay? Yeah, yeah I, I understand yeah. that too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right. Uh, you know, I, kind of, oh, sorry. Oh, our invisible hand has joined us. <laughs> has joined us. Yeah. No, it's Adam Smith. Smith. Well, Hello. you guys were talking about kind of oh. staying and fighting. Right. It got to me as someone who just actually ran for office, state assembly here in California. As there's um an an effort going on in the state assembly, no, uh, state senate. Actually, just passed the state assembly. It's now in the state assembly to give um. Governor Newsom, the names and addresses of everybody who signed the petition, to talk to you about how strong the political machine is here in California. Okay. And when you're talking about, especially state workers, I know for those people here locally, if you're a state worker and you have signed that petition, you know, you maybe have some questions yeah. about how, uh, how to say, pleasant your job environment will be. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Wow. It's, well, it's now, a that, machine in New York that's that powerful that where they can essentially do whatever they want and no one even says anything. Yeah. Now, now if yeah. that's a, a reason to get rid of them, I mean, if you didn't have enough prior, yeah, I mean, that right sure. there, yeah, you know, is is uh, should push you over the edge. Talk talk about that. Talk about an invasion of privacy, right? Mm -hmm. Well, no, but it also brings up Leon's point earlier that. It doesn't even. It doesn't really matter if you get rid of Newsom because that mindset that is controlling Newsom it, are, exists in the legislature. It exists in the, in the Senate and the, and the Assembly. It didn't, you unless you elect people like me, you're not going to get it. The political machine isn't going to change. Well, exactly. that's that is true. But uh, if you would that affect your decision about uh, whether or not to recall Newsom? So let's say you had to vote, get rid of him and let somebody else go in or not. I mean, you'd, I would still vote to get rid of it. Well, so what it's in a sense, it's the same as Prop 22 here where you had, I guess, nationally, it's what is that? The national, the pro act or whatever nationally they want to do now is Prop 22 versus AB5. And the Prop 22, I had Prop 22 is terrible, but it was better than AB5, so you had no choice. And is getting rid of Newsom better than leaving him there? Well, yeah. Not only is he corrupt, he's incompetent. That's a terrible combination. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. that, yeah, so, it's true. Yeah. And, that, and that's a fair point. And that's a fair point. And, and, that's, and, and Tim, that's a, a very good question. But... I would, when, I mean, when when the, when the um when the recall comes around, I will still vote to remove him, but I I, I don't think it's going to make a difference in terms of who replaces him, given given the crop of politicians we have out there right now, the, who are running the state essentially. And James, I think we're getting an echo from your uh, <laughs> headphoneless uh, personage over there. It tells you how good of a director I am. I forgot to plug my head. Yeah. Yeah, directors run around with headphones, haven't you heard? 
<laughs> well, so, yeah, real directors do. When you guys pay me, I'll get to that. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I want to pay you. I want to pay you. Huh? Oh, I that's what I'm going to do to get some okay. good directorship here. I know what to get you for Christmas. A paycheck? That's <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> These little dangly things. I've got one. Back in. Uh, I prefer a paycheck. I'll bet you do. All right. I will leave you guys back to it. All so right. By the way, you guys have about four minutes for your uh, knuckle uh, for your knucklehead noise patrol. Ah, okay. okay. Well, you know, as we escape this topic <laughs> of escaping from New York and Los Angeles, uh, there's, there's been other uh, you know burning news of the day, and that's uh, uh, the Chauvin trial uh, verdict just came up, and so you know I hate to miss that. Uh, and, you know, the, the bottom line is he was convicted of, of all three charges. Um, but, you know, it, 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 was it a fair process or not? And I guess that really brings up the question, you know, it, you know, when he was uh, originally, uh, you know, this happened, he was, it was said he was a racist murderer. I guess if you believe then that this was a just result, was he a racist murderer then? Or, you know, is this more of an issue of being a sacrificial lamb where, the public just wants to offer it up just so the issue will go away. What do you guys think? I, it, it seemed like there was an awful lot of uh, potential reasonable doubt in this trial. Well, the prosecution did not the, the prosecution did not raise one single piece of evidence that said that race had anything to do with what Chavin did. Okay. Now I'm not saying Chavin is a good guy. I'm not suggesting that, but they did not raise one single issue about race during the trial. Okay, since this thing happened, we have all seen the video. We have seen, we have seen um, the, the, our city's been burned down because of it. And it's all because of the systemic racism that is going on. That's what they claim. But yet, when we get into court, where it really matters, not one single issue of race was raised. But so why Chauvin did what he did. Now, looking at the trial... He was there were three charges against him. I don't know if all of them were justified, but at least some of them were. Because even though Derek Chauvin started with a, a, a legitimate use of force by kneeling, kneeling, by kneeling on George Floyd's neck, it was legitimate. It was in the police manual. But clearly, looking at that video, I think he went too far. So he was, as far as I'm concerned, he was guilty of something. Now, I don't know if all those murder charges were necessary, but he was guilty of something as far as I'm concerned, and he should have gone to prison as he is right now. But there's a twist in this. There's a twist in this. He probably going to get off because of Maxine Waters, that crazy fool who is a congresswoman from here in California. He's probably going to get off because of that. And the judge even said that. So... Hmm. We're probably going to be facing some rioting if this thing is ever overturned, which it probably will be. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm glad they didn't bring up race in the, the trial because that, that's something that the Democrats like to do. And it's done as a smokescreen and it's done in a way that actually heightens the burden. So you can't actually, you can't actually, because now if you have to prove that this person is a racist, like, how do you prove the, uh, uh, an internal mindset? And it, it obscures from the actions that took place. And so often the Democrats will use charges of racism because it, because it distracts from the fact of how responsible they are for the, the policies um, and the procedures that are going on. I mean, if you take a look at somebody like Eric Garner, they will say, oh yes, it's, it's these racist cops, but they don't want to talk about the taxes the, the, the sin taxes that are the reason why the cops were there to arrest uh, Eric Garner in the first place. So yeah. it's something that politicians do to move the attention off of them. Well, well, that is so true. I mean, everything these days, I mean, uh, in, 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 in the point you made, everything these days has been masked by charges of racism. Nobody yeah. wants to look at policy. Look at our schools, okay? Yes. Okay. I mean, urban uh, the urban schools in our urban centers are some of the crappy schools in probably in the world. I, I, well, maybe that's an exaggeration, but certainly in in the country. Yes. But nobody wants to talk about the education 
black and brown kids are getting in the urban parts of America. Right. Nobody wants to talk about that. But as soon as something goes wrong, the first thing we hear, systemic racism. Right. That's it. And it's they don't talk about systemic racism these days. <laughs> yeah. But when it's funny too, because you talk about that one issue and it's almost like the system is systemically not set up to serve those kids. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, well, talk about, you talk about a systemic abuse. I mean, who, who are those kids yeah. serving? Right? right. I mean, if a bad business, a bad private business isn't getting the job done, they go away. I, I mean, you know, these schools, they're there forever, you know, until the, yes. the bricks, you know, uh, uh, you know, erode from time. <laughs> I mean, so, but this, uh. but this is the dangers. This is the dangers of having the government monopolize any function in our society. Yeah. Well, I think we're just about at that point in the show where uh, we like to end on something a little bit uh, a lighter note of something silly that a politician or a media person said. And this time, it's it's once again it's related to the Chauvin trial. <laughs> Uh, but it is columnist uh, from the uh, Washington Post, uh, Christine Emba. And in her uh, column, she said, why I'm not watching the uh, Derek Chauvin trial. And so essentially, uh, she had said this, uh, said feckless legislatures are trotting out old arguments against <laughs> those who seek reform in police conduct. The real problem is black criminality the police don't deserve all this trouble and the words of senator john neely kennedy uh the next time you get in trouble call a crackhead and then she says well maybe i will statistically they're less likely to shoot me it would seem so <laughs> I, mean, I know washington post now is saying that they're they're more in favor of calling crackheads for crackheads, help in the yes, police. Yes. I, you know it almost sounds like they're in an echo chamber. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. What do you guys think? It, it seems it was like a pretty crazy statement from what we thought was a respectable newspaper. I don't know. Well, there's no, there's no vaccine. There's no vaccine for stupidity. That's that's one thing to so take note. Take note of that. But if this, if this woman ever lived in the real world, if she did call the crackhead, she's more likely to be shot than being shot by the police, despite what MSNBC and CNN says. Okay. So she should try calling the crackhead if she think if she thinks she's better off calling them. Please do. I, I wish you luck. Please do. Anybody else have any thoughts on that from our panel? <clears throat> well, the cra the cra you mean it's, okay. I had to read it because you went silent for a moment. But, so the the crackhead is less like likely to shoot shoot her than said. a cop. <clears throat> I don't know. Um, I guess that would assume that, you know, statistically she was, uh, less likely, she said. Statistically, statistically yeah. yeah. Okay. She's got some numbers there, apparently. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, well if you give them some crack. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you yeah, go. Maybe she's got the crack available. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, she, she probably has a point. I don't know what, what good it does. I mean, you know. Uh, I'm, I'm statistically less likely to die in a plane crash than I am in a car crash, but that doesn't mean that I don't take uh, uh, lots of check rides and get a yearly uh, uh, re-indoctrination from flight safety. Uh, yeah. So, um, you know, just because the statistics, <laughs> anyway, I don't know. That's just crazy stock, but there we are. We're talking <laughs> politicians, aren't we? Well, well, it was a media, media, media personality. Maybe, maybe I would say she should do her little experiment. She should, she should, yeah. whenever she gets in trouble, call the crackhead and send yeah. and, and see how it turns out. I think she should do that. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we can get some statistics on that. Afterwards. There you go. <laughs> then she should get some real statistics, and then she could say, then she could say, oh, maybe, I, I'm, I, maybe I'm not better off doing this. You know, maybe she might learn a lesson or two. Good idea. Well, uh, you know, that that's just about the end of our show. Uh, but uh, uh, we've had a good time. We had a good time with our guest, Aaron Comey, of Escaping the Echo Chamber. Go check his show out. And do uh, you want to give out your web uh, page real quick just to say oh. it out? For uh, yeah, escapingtheechochamber.com. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, go check that out. And we hope to see you again next week. Uh, so until then, stay free. Thank you for watching the Knuckleheads of Liberty. Listen each week in Sacramento on Comcast Channel 17 for Knuckleheads of Liberty on Monday at 5.30 p.m. 
and the Libertarian Counterpoint Show on Thursday at 8 p.m. Also on YouTube, Facebook, and podcasts everywhere. We invite you to come again next week for the Libertarian Counterpoint Productions.